and you ought to give him glory now. Glory to God. And today I want to read to you. Um, I started doing this last year around some time. Um, very powerful book. Uh, very first book I, I've written. Um, that I began to read. Uh, I, read I, think I, read, I think I read the first two chapters on YouTube. I think I put them on YouTube. But it's called The Sexual Demon in the Church. Arabuko. And a lot of you don't understand that there is a sexual demon in the church that comes to try to kill, steal, and destroy your marriage, your finance, your ministry, your mental uh, health. It, 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 uh, you got to stay. You remember the man Samson in the Bible? One of the strongest men, the strongest man that ever lived. Glory to God. Well, um, yes, he was strong. He didn't need an army. He didn't need a, 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 any machine guns or tanks. He didn't need any horses or chariots. He didn't need any bow and arrows, or any swords. All he needed was himself. Because the Spirit of God would come upon Samson and he can grab whatever is handy. It, it could be a jawbone of an ass sitting over there. He'll grab that jawbone of an ass and he can slew. He can kill a thousand men like that. He can kill a lion with his bare hands because he was so strong. He was a, a beast. But he had one problem. He just loved the ladies too much. And that became his downfall. And, and, and the enemy was able to get in through sexual immorality. David, remember David? Shouting David. You know, uh, anointed David. Oh, glory to God. Uh, I've gotten a lot of my sermons from David. Uh, the Lord have mercy. I mean, I used to love preaching on David, love talking about David, love speaking on David. Uh, if I see David right now, I let him come, man, come ride shotgun with me real quick, man. Let's walk around. I want to talk to you about something. But David was a David was a, a, a great man of God, a mighty man of valor. Uh, David was a man that, 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 that he himself uh, slain the lion and the bear. When it came, because he was a shepherd boy, and it came in the sheepfold, and he slain the lion and the bear. David himself is a man who, through the Spirit of God, was able, in Jesus' name, to um, defeat a giant called Goliath. David. David was so anointed, David was so bad, the women began to sing. They said, uh, Saul has killed his thousands. David. His ten thousands, David was a mighty man of God. But he had a little problem. He liked the women. He liked the women a little bit. He, he. <laughs> Glory to God. Those are just two examples of great men of God who uh, have made mistakes when it comes to sexual immorality. And so the enemy can use and will use sexual situations. The Bible in the New Testament calls it lasciviousness. <laughs> lasciviousness. I know you heard of fornication, right? Right? You heard of adultery, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you may have heard of whoremongers, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of lasciviousness? That is when people think I'm making this thing up. That is when you have out of control sexual desires. You ever had out of control sexual desires? It's one thing to have sexual desires, you know. Mm -hmm. But has that thing ever got out of control mm -hmm. to where you look at your co-workers, your boss, maybe your boss's wife, or your mother's husband, or your best friend's husband, or have you ever had out of control sexual desires to where can't nobody control you and you can't control yourself? Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about? Hmm. Glory to God. Perhaps maybe I should read you some scriptures first. Because some people don't, don't think that there is a sexual demon in the church. So perhaps I should read a couple of scriptures. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I should 
take it Romans. Let's go to Romans real quick. And, and maybe we'll get to the to the spot where we need to be. And I'm gonna I am gonna read you some more out of the book that I wrote, uh, the sexual demon in the church. But right now, let me show you something in the Bible. Now, this is an inspired word of God. That means God inspired means God breathed. This is not God breathed. This is God. Uh, this is uh, quite frankly me using my experience and gifts that God's given me to write this. So, there's a reason why there are certain books that men have written that are not in the Bible. So, I love it when people start want to talk about a lost book. There ain't no lost books. This book just didn't make it. To, they, they ain't in the Bible. That was not inspired. Everybody shook one. But what we have in the Holy Bible is the inspired God breathed word of God. But that's a lesson for a whole nother time. We'll, we'll just get you over here first. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. So let me uh, take you somewhere real quick in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 1. And we're going to read. I think I'll read at verse 25. It says, who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use in which was against nature. If you don't know what that is, then that's um, les lesbianism. But uh, let us go deeper. And likewise also the, the men, leaving the natural use of the woman... Burning their lust one toward another. If you don't know what that means, I'll just let you know what that means. You know what it means. It means lesbian, gay activity. But let's go on. Burning lust with one toward another, men with men, working that which I is unseemly. And receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Watch this now. Fornication. You know what fornication is. You're called by ye, man. So we all know what fornication is, don't we? But we don't seem to know what lasciviousness is. <laughs> lasciviousness is uh, out of control sexual desires. That's what you're seeing when it says men with men and women with women. But let's go deeper because it's deeper than that. Wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malintent, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, and venice of evil, th of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable. Unmerciful, all these things, global shot are going on. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do, they'll do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And watch this. Now, that is some deep thing, also, too. Glory to God. So, what I want you to see in Romans chapter 1 was men with men, women with women, and then he named fornication. Those were three different sexual acts he named. He said men with men, women with women, with women and fornication. Fornication, we know that is just you just having sex without being married. Men with men, you know what that is. Men women with women, you know what that is. Lesbians, lesbianism and gay. And gay. I'm talking to the church now. So if you want to listen, if you're in the world and you want to listen, God bless you. I'm, I'm glad you're on here. Um... Glory to God. If you're struggling with out of control sexual desires, then I'm going to tell you right now, you need help. But 
if you're struggling with sex, out of control sexual desires, I'm going to tell you that the cure isn't marriage. No, no, no. See, people make that mistake. See, they, they think, well, uh, I'm struggling with fornication. I'm struggling with uh, lasciviousness. I'm, I'm struggling sexually in the church. So maybe I should just go ahead and get married. And if I get married, that control my appetite for lasciviousness. No, it won't. Matter of fact, it may even enhance that thing. Before you get married to somebody, you better deal with your sexual immorality first. Because if you think the cure is in another person, no. That's a demonic force that has to be dealt with. That's one of the reasons why I wrote this book. Because the enemy will trick you into thinking that all I got to do is get married. And I'm good. No, nah, baby. You got to get here. You got to get delivered. If not, you'll bring another person into your perversion. Which is another thing. We go. Let, let, let me uh show you something real quick. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 1, it says this. It's reported commonly uh, that there is fornication among you. Such fornication as is not so much as name among the Gentiles. That one should have his father's wife. Now watch this now. Let me read that again. Because you, you know, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Such fornication that one should have uh, his father's wife. That means that a man in the church is sleeping with his stepmom. There and I'm And that's falling under lasciviousness someone with out of control sexual desire now watch this i want to show you the church's response to this this is first corinthians uh chapter five can i show you the church response to this thing here's what the church did and you are puffed up wait a minute uh, they are puffed up about it and i'm not rather mourn that 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 he that done this deed might be taken away from among you. In other words, they they some of them are excited about it. They're like, man, how'd you pull that off? You see how lasciviousness and sexual immorality and all this can have your mind so twisted, dear car bush, not my heart, that you're not thinking straight no more. See, when lasciviousness comes in, when out of control sexual desire comes in, um, you're not thinking about your wife and kids at home. You're not thinking about your career. You're not thinking about the money you can lose. You're not thinking about the position you can lose. You're not thinking about, you ain't thinking that you're the dean of this, of this school that I shouldn't be doing this. You're not thinking I'm the principal in the school, so I shouldn't be, you're not thinking about, well, I'm the teacher in here. I can't be, I'm the professor. I really can't sleep with all the students. I can't. You're not thinking, well, I got a wife at home. Well, well I, I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm the teacher. I, you, you just started. You're the teacher. you 26 years old. A teacher. And, and here come the 15-year-old the student. You got to be something wrong up here for you to engage in that certain activity. You're not thinking, oh, my God, I just, see, I just received a pick from somebody underage. I just did, you're not thinking about you straight because the spirit of the enemy is try directing your thoughts and you're not thinking oh my new no core by uh, the consequences of your actions because a sexual demon and that ain't talking about something that's in the world now i'm talking about something that's in the church let me tell you something this is this is a letter first corinthians that's written to the church and paul wrote to the romans this, that, that 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 was written to the post that was that was uh spiritual supposed to be saved but there is a sexual demon that's Hovering around and in the church today, and unless it is dealt with, you can find yourself, Shama, getting married in places where you should have said no thanks. Can I? Can I? Can we go deeper with this thing? That's why you can't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what common and what communion has light with darkness? 
Hallelujah. Did you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is dwells in you? Glory to God. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body itself, your physical body, is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And when you sin sexually, you may think that you're the only one, only one that's being affected. But the whole body has been affected because we are all a part of the same body. <laughs> Every sin that a man does is outside his body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Now, how do you do about shame? Glory to God. This is so good. But I want you to know something because there's some of you right now. There are pastors that are struggling with. I, I'm gonna call it lasciviousness, but you know, if you if you've been listening to the whole recording, you know I'm talking about sexual immorality. There's pastors right now struggling with the spirit. There are co-pastors right now. Suffering with the spirit. There's pastors, wives, struggling with this spirit. My God, you know. There's uh, pastors, armor bearers, secretaries, struggling with this spirit. Choir members, ushers. Deacons, my God, struggling with this very same spirit, my God in here. There are those right now secretly struggling with pornographies, all kind of things. And what the end game in all that is this, the devil wants you to destroy your marriage your ministry your money your testimony whatever he can get out of you horrible soul that's what he wants my god in here yeah, let me show you something in galatians chapter 5 see somebody thought i made up that word lasciviousness i want to show you something this is Galatians. This is another church that Paul was writing to, Galatians chapter 5. And then I'm going to read you some little something, something out of the sexual demon in the church's book I wrote. I promise. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 and around verse 16 says this. For this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to another. So that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit. You are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these. Adultery. That's one form of sexual immorality. Adultery. That's one sexual act. Adultery. Let me tell you something else. As we repent. As I stand in the gap with my other brothers and sisters who have been caught up in adultery, I pray and repent and ask for their forgiveness. Choke all that by heart. Now watch this. Fornication. That's another act. Sexual act. Uncleanness. That's another sexual act. And lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is out of control. Sexual desires. That's all you think about. Have you ever been on a job and you got that one coworker and that's all they talk about all day long is sexual situations. And sometimes that person could be married. And you as a man and a woman of God, you got say you got somebody on a job that's making sexual jokes and all that. Mm -hmm. 
and they're making all these sexual jokes, and you laughing, you just laughing away. Don't you know you are you are taking um, pleasure in them that do these things? You're just a man laughing and giggling about cheating on his wife and all that stuff. And there is a sexual demon in the church. And I want you to know something. And it's hard to defeat this kind of enemy mm -hmm. without fasting and prayer, first of all. But it's also hard to defeat this type of enemy by yourself. I want you to know something else. Is that we're going to have to stop trying to fight the, this, this enemy, this devil by ourselves. And it's hard because we don't know who we can trust. Some of you have been hurt. Some of you went to your pastors with this kind of thing. You said, well, I had to go to the pastor and confess and tell him I'm struggling and maybe he can pray for me. And you thought you was getting you didn't get help, and you got you got put on blast for the whole church. You was just trying to tell them something between you know, so you was hurt. So you don't, you would never open your mouth again. Some of you, you went to somewhere to try to confide and and confess some things and do some things, and and lo and behold, the person tried to take advantage of your weakness. They, oh, you struggling with that, huh? Well, they like with well, me too. We might as well get together. Some of you in the name of Kobaba Surabaha. That's what happened to some of you in Jesus' name. Let me apologize on behalf of ministry staffs and pastors everywhere. Uh, they need to repent and ask forgiveness in Jesus' name. Hmm. But I do want you to know this. Did any me? Is not your husband, your wife. You don't need a new wife. You don't need a new husband. Nope. You need a change, new mind. Let me read you something real quick out of uh, an excerpt right here. This is chapter three. Uh, this, this is called Sex in the Church. Chapter three, Sex in the Church. I mentioned earlier that my first sexual experience happened when I was five years old at my grandmother's house and how that same spirit followed me to Pontiac, Michigan at my mother's house. However, it did not stop there. It also followed me to church and that is when things really got interesting. It is reported to me that there is fornication among you, such fornication that one should have his father's wife and you are puffed up and I'm not yet rather mourn that, that that he that done this deed might be taken away from among you. And that was the scripture I read to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 earlier. These are Paul's words to the church in Corinth. Church is the last place you would think this kind of perversion exists. But it does every day. What do you think goes through the mind of a man? that will sleep with his stepmom or mother. The enemy has blinded the minds of the church to the fact that this perversion goes on in your clergy and ministerial staff. Paul also stated in the text that the church was puffed up about this sexual sin. They celebrated and were impressed with the man in the church for being capable of sleeping with his father's wife. Who are you impressed with? Are we in the church impressed by sexual sin? God forbid. It is hard to hear God calling you out of something when your flesh has begun to like it. This impression the world leaves on the church comes from influence. We are influenced by what we see on television, videos, also other Christians in our, in our midst. Paul instructed the church not to keep company with any man that is called a brother that is a fornicator, even not to eat with him. And I do believe there's a reason for that because not, not, not he didn't say not to keep coming with somebody that's a, a liar or a black stiver, or anything, but a, 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 somebody that's considered a, a brother that's caught up in fornication because what can happen is it can rub off on you and not a whole body, it's, the whole body may be contaminated. <laughs> 
you 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 have half of the church caught up in sexual morality if you don't deal with it. But let's keep let's go deep. First Corinthians chapter five verse one. Is it states that Paul knew how influence can play a role in sexual behavior. A man in the church that is called a deacon is a fornicator. Now watch this now. He says, and you become influenced and impressed by him. The woman who holds the title of pastor. It has three men in the choir stand that come over her house for frequent visits, and you are influenced by her. Galatians says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. That means who you hang around can influence you to do things you would not normally do. Who is your little leaven? Maybe it is the choir director who just has a little sex every now and then. Have you ever noticed how some people act differently around certain people? A sister in the church you do not particularly care for does not speak to you. But when she is around other saint, another saint, she speaks. Hmm. Some folks will not praise God unless another person is doing it. That is called influence. We tend to act differently when we are by ourselves. And we think no one is watching. Believe it or not, as a Christian, you have influence over other Christians and the world. When you start dating men who are in the world, other sisters in church believe they can do the same thing. A brother in the church with several girlfriends, the world sees this, then believes if it is good enough for him, then I will do it too. In the church walls, I notice often we point out the homosexuals, but do not, but not the fornicators. I wonder often if we got rid of all the fornicators in the church, how would church membership go down? The walls of the church would testify against us if they could talk. I've seen more sex in the walls of the church than in the nightclubs and bars. I've seen pastors having babies out of wedlock with a member who was married to another woman. <laughs> I remember a preacher having two women pregnant at the same time in the same church. The two women cons consequently found out about each other and began to fight in the women's bathroom. There was a pastor making visits to members' houses, but not for prayer, for sex. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When you have sexual demonic forces controlling you, yet in, you are in the church, you become unstable. Your relationships become unstable. That is why you do not know if you want to marry that woman or not. This behavior has to stop in these last days. All sin a man does is on the outside of his body. But he that commits fornication, sin against his own body. And not just, I'm just talking about this body. I'm talking about the whole church body. is It's just a part of the body. We are the body of Christ. So when we commit fornication, we sin against the body of Christ. Your sin of fornication now does not affect just you. It affects others in the body who are struggling as well. It is important to know that whoever you sleep with, you now become a part of that person. You believe that? Whoever you sleep with, you become a part of that person. <laughs> Sometimes we think, Sex is over when we got out of the bed. But well, oftentimes, when you really think about it, that person is really in your head. Let me let me show you something. 1 Corinthians 6 and 16 says this. Know ye not which is joined to a harlot is one body? Have you ever noticed that after having sex with someone, you find yourself wanting things you did not want before? Things you used to hate and judge other folks for wanting and doing, and now all of a sudden you do these same things? Habits you did not have before. Now you have them after you have slept with someone. I noticed. My God. My God. Every now and then you see something that you're like, my God. My God. I noticed people who tried to get over a sexual partner over off and sleep with another man or woman to get rid of the pain and loss. This does not work. It only increases your pain of losing a sexual bed mate. Learn how to fast and pray to suffer loss. Learn how to fast and pray to suffer loss. Learn how to fast and pray to suffer loss. Yeah, bon so. This is the only way to rid yourself of pain. That is why you miss the person you slept with because it feels like a part of you is gone when they left you. Apostle Paul says flee fornication. And this is the reason why it is because of the pain of loss that will have you longing for a man or a woman that, who does not want you anymore. He does not instruct the church to pray for fornication 
but rather to run from it. Run from your one night stands or that ex you cannot get over. Flee that boyfriend you keep having sex with the night before the service. You know that you know the, the one that has you missing Bible study. Run like Joseph did when he was faced with Pharaoh's wife when she tried to seduce him to sing with her. Joseph ran away from her. Let me show you how to run. Delete all numbers of ex lovers. Trash all emails from your one night stands. Get rid of some friends who always talk about sex. Stop calling that man who is your friend with benefits. When some man or woman who seduces comes over unannounced, do not answer the door. Flee fornication. The house of the Lord is for worship and prayer. But if we do not deal with the sexual demon that can become a dating service, Christ said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. But you have made it into a den of thieves. Mark eleven seventeen 17 says this, a thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That is what the enemy does when you fall into sexual sin. He steals your joy, your peace, but most of all, your confidence in God. Sexual sin causes guilt, and when guilt says sin, you do not want to pray anymore. Guilt will cause you to stop coming to church, but yet keep sexting. You stop coming to the service because you feel unworthy before after that Saturday night love session with another woman's man. When you have a made a mistake and given to sexual sin, do not run away from the church, but run to the altar. Church is supposed to be the place of healing, not the combination of death. Do not leave your covering if you are if you if you have no covering, you have no protection. He that dwell up in the secret place of the most high, set abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91 and verse 1. When you get into trouble, just dial 911. That is Psalms 91 and verse 1. My God. That means no matter how many mistakes you make on your way to perfection, still stay in the house. Do not leave your ministry because of guilt from your past or present. Your thief wants to steal your joy, and he does it this through perversion. Then comes shame and guilt. Repent. There are better days ahead of you. This is a war. And some battles you win, some you will lose, but the war you will win. Never let any saint tell you it is better to marry than to burn because you are struggling with sexual morality. Marriage is not a cure for perversion. Get married for love, not sex. Lust will fade away, but love will never fail. Often people in the church tell this to singles that you get married too soon when you are divorced and you will really have issues. When you are single, you are used to dating whoever you want, partying, having having a mate that you have sex with two or three times a week. Now that you are saved, that which was normal yesterday becomes abnormal today. You decide to go cold turkey with dating and sex. Loneliness often creeps in and you start calling old friends, lovers, and boyfriends. And then when this happens, often you do not want to date anybody in the church because you do not want them to know who you really are. And how dirty you can talk. When loneliness sets in, it becomes more than we can stand. So we go back to what is comfortable and familiar. The enemy uses your loneliness to trap you after you have committed a mistake of lust. You may miss a couple of Sundays to get your head together. This is a mistake. The only place you should be after anything bad in your life is in Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. Sexual desires, desires have you on the run. But do not run to that woman's bed. Call on the name of Jesus. Tell him all about it. You cannot be delivered if you do not talk. Some things you do, some things do not come out but by prayer and fasting. There are spirits we cannot defeat until we have prayed and fasted. I believe that sexual morality is one of those spirits. Paul said, I buffet my body and bring it under subjection after I preach unto others. I myself become a castaway. 1 Corinthians, that's 9 and 7, 9 and 27. Notice what Paul is saying after all his preaching and teaching. If he does not, if he does not deal with his flesh, then he will not get the benefits of God. You must understand it takes dis discipline to get rid of sexual immorality. And discipline comes from fasting. Do not just fast from food. But also the television, social networks, radio, negative thinking and talking. The challenge for a lot of singles in the church is when they see someone they like in church, how to go about dating them. The question is, do you date them alone or in a group? Or go to the movies or have a person every year over, over your house? I would say never put yourself in a situation that your flesh will have you in trouble. 
or repenting in the next service or on the altar. Whether you are single or married, the flesh has to be brought under control. The enemy will use sex to distract or curse the people of God, distract you from your goals and ministry. He will curse your pocketbook because now you're paying child support. But if you just would have kept it in your pants, that money would be all yours. When Moses began leading the people out of Israel, when Moses began leading the people of Israel out of Egypt, he was on the mountaintop receiving the commandments of God. While he was on top of a mountain, the people of God were on the bottom of of the same mountain committing orgies, adultery, and fornication. Many of those saints died in the wilderness that day. That is what sexual sin does. It causes you to be distracted from the glory and the focus on the flesh. Revelation chapter 2 talks about a man called Balaam who put a stumbling block in the people of God's way and this stumbling block was sexual perversion. A stumbling block causes you to fall and it stands in your way of reaching your goal. How many times, how many times, men of God, have you said, I should be further in my ministry than this? What about you, woman of God? How many times have you said, I could have finished college by now if it was not for him? Stuck at the stumbling block. Let God remove your flesh and sex out of your way, church. Then we will see the glory of God. Sex among God's people has become a problem from Genesis to Revelation. It is a weapon the devil used to try to destroy your testimony. The important thing to, to know is what to do after it fall. I know there are many preachers who say do not fall at all. And then you will have no trouble. That's like saying not to wake up in the morning. So you will not have, any, have trouble. Whenever you wake up in the morning, you're already in trouble. This world is full of temptation and lust. The first thing you need to do after it fall is not condemn yourself. Christ died for your sins already. If you go to church that preaches tell preaches you to hell and try to get you to heaven, then good luck. Christ dealt with your sins at Calvary. Past, present, and future sins are nailed at his cross. Create distance from that man or woman you fell into lust with. This could be complicated if you go both go, go to the same church. If this brother or sister is serious about their walk with God, they will not keep tempting you. However, if they didn't they do then it is a good time to let your pastor know of the situation. Now, if you both do not want the relationship to end and you'll keep falling, God has an answer for that too. The answer is, whatsoever you sow to your flesh, you shall of your flesh reap corruption. Do not have your faith destroyed over sexual morality. From the deacon board, choir stand, pool, pet, usher board, any auxiliary in the church, sex is running wild. I pray that you will begin to become ashamed of sin instead of basking in it. Then we can defeat the sexual demon in the church. The church often becomes a battleground and not the world. We as preachers of the gospel must start, my God, dealing with the real issues in the church and, and not just trying to build ourselves a kingdom. I want you to understand the churches in America that deal with issues are the ones that are always growing. But the ones that do not, do not stay in the same spot, but the ones that do not stay in the same spot or sometimes even go backwards. Oh my God. My brothers and sisters, by any means necessary, let us defeat sexual sin before we let it destroy us in the church. See that. Do you feel what I'm saying? Hmm. Sexual morality is an issue. It is a problem. It is a struggle. It is a fight at one in the morning. It is a fight at three and four o'clock in the evening. It is a faith fight. The best way to get out of that thing is start fasting. Start, st start it by fasting. But I want you to know something also that God's grace is sufficient for you. For his strength is made perfect in weakness. God bless you and keep you. <laughs> and if it's a word, then I must have been. And if it's not, then I wasn't with it. Stay committed.